Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Downloading and Installing Eclipse. This video was made under a Creative Commons Attribution non-commercial license. In this video, you're going to learn what Eclipse is and what it can be used for. You'll see how to download and install Eclipse. And we'll take a brief look at Eclipse to see that it is working on your computer. So, you may be asking, what is Eclipse? Eclipse is a development environment, a software application with lots of tools that you can use to create stuff. Eclipse is integrated. This means that all the tools provided by Eclipse are collected in one software package that works together. You can also think of integrated as meaning that the diverse components that you create are integrated to form a complete package for your application. So finally, Eclipse is known as an Integrated Development Environment, or IDE for short. To start with the installation, point your browser to www.eclipse.org. Once there, we'll see the Eclipse organization's main page. Eclipse is a community for individuals and organizations who wish to collaborate on commercially friendly open source software. One of the projects of the Eclipse Foundation is the popular open source Java IDE called Eclipse. Please click on the link in the top right of your browser labeled Download. The latest version's code name is shown here. Notice that there are two places you can click to get Eclipse. The obvious one is the bright orange download button. Just below that though, notice it says Download Packages. We're going to look at Download Packages page first because there's something else that we'll need before Eclipse can run on your machine. This is the Eclipse download package page. Note that there are a number of different packages for Eclipse. Each one includes the basic Eclipse IDE, but the different packages will include different tools. Developers should get the package that matches the types of things that they're going to want to create. For us, that's going to be the package that lets us create enterprise web applications. But don't click on that yet. First, we need to make sure that we have the right Java JDK. To get the Java JDK, scroll down the page until you see the hint in the right margin of the page. We're going to navigate away from the Eclipse site in order to get the appropriate JDK. To do this, right-click on the link, Java Runtime Environment, JRE, shown here. I'm going to open it in a new tab. Here we see several options for the JDK. Any of these should work fine. As Java is owned by Oracle, I'm going to go to the source and get the Oracle JDK. On the Oracle Java download page, I see a few options. I'm going to click on the JDK button here. Now we see a list of multiple downloads for the Java SE development kit. The trick here is that you want to pick the one that matches the operating system on your machine. I'm using a Mac, so of course I'm going to get the one for the Mac OS X. If you're on a Windows machine, you'll want to get the XE version for Windows as it will make for an easier install. First, click the radio button to accept the license agreement. Then locate the link appropriate for your operating system and click on it. Once your download is complete, navigate to the file in your Finder or File Explorer. After we find it in the File Explorer, we need to open and run this installer in order to install the JDK. When the installer opens, whether Windows or Mac OS, simply work through each dialog in turn until the installation is complete. Now that we have the appropriate JDK, we can go back and resume our installation of Eclipse. Here we are back on the Eclipse Packages download page. There are a couple of ways to download Eclipse. You could download the package that you need directly from the list. Or instead, you can use the nice Eclipse installer. You see this on the page as the large blue box near the top. For this video, I'm going to use the installer. 
I suggest you do the same as it is the easiest way to automatically install Eclipse. So click on the blue box in order to download the installer. Then of course click the download button on the next page. Once the download is complete we need to run the installer file. So as we did before with the JDK installer, navigate to the Eclipse installer file in your file explorer. Then open and run this file. Here we see the Eclipse installer. Note again that there are multiple types of packages that you can get for the Eclipse IDE. For our needs we're going to select the Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. Once the Eclipse installation is complete, you have some options. First, let's go ahead and launch Eclipse so that we can see what it looks like. As Eclipse launches, it will notify you of a location on your hard drive that it considers to be the workspace. The workspace is the default location for storing any of your project files that you create while using Eclipse. You may browse to change this, or you may use the one that is created by Eclipse. I tend to stick with the default workspace for most of my projects. After that, Eclipse will finish loading and you'll be able to start developing your Java EE projects. We'll discuss how to do this in later videos in this series. For now, let's just shut down Eclipse. One last thing that I like to do is that I want to make sure that I can easily find and open Eclipse. So I'm going to add it to my software dock at the bottom of the screen. You might want to add it as a shortcut icon on your desktop if you're using a Windows OS. For a Mac, I need to find the Eclipse starter file, and then I can simply drag that to my dock. Now that the Eclipse and the Java JDK are installed, you should be ready to start building applications with the Eclipse IDE. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy under Creative Commons license. This has been a Piercy production.